and welcome back uh, to part six of the Airfix 72 scale new tool Vulcan build. And in this part, I'll be assembling the majority of the airframe as much as I can this week and hopefully get the model somewhere towards being able to prime the airframe and paint it. So let's get to it. We'll get over to the bench and make a start on the rest of the airframe. OK, so the first thing I want to do with this assembly now that it's nice and dried up is to sort the steps out on the outboard wing panels just on here and along the front as well just where it joins this overlapping join here the steps worse here right at the tip of the wing and that's certainly going to need sorting out i've done the uh, starboard side already and got a nice smooth even finish on that now but it took quite a bit of work so uh, we'll do this other side now just to uh, show how I went about it uh, the other thing you might notice this thing at the top of the fin on the radar housing it's just some blue tack with some tape on it uh, and that's just to prevent the very thin top of the radar housing getting bent or distorted or bumped uh, because it is very thin it will get damaged particularly when we uh, do this work on the underside and we tend to put the aeroplane down on its fin so this is where I'm going to be doing the work right at the edge on the port side the leading edge isn't too bad it's going to need taking down a little bit to remove a tiny step it was a lot worse uh, on the starboard side the step at the end is about the same on both wings. There's a couple of things when I'm taking down a big step like this. There's obviously panel lines which come right to this join and the step is easily deeper than the panel lines. So if I just went straight ahead and sanded out the step, I'd lose the panel lines here and I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to rescribe the panel lines from plain blank plastic. So I just go along and accentuate the existing lines and deepen them a little bit towards the end where I'm doing all the sanding. And that way, as I'm sanding down, I retain the original panel line. And I just find it's neater than trying to establish the end of a panel line from scratch and try and blending it in with the panel line further up the wing. So not too much, just enough to uh, retain the line when we're sanding. I'm using some pretty coarse wet and dry for this. And as usual, I'm using it wet just to reduce burn on the plastic. And this needs quite a lot of taking down it took me a good half hour to uh, get the starboard side sorted out and you don't want to concentrate just on the end where the step is you've got to kind of blend the whole of the wing up so you don't get an abrupt uh, curve down at the join line it wants to be nicely smoothed into the rest of the wing just be careful of the landing light transparency that we've already fitted there's kind of a depression in the Vulcan wing on the underside here, just along this sort of line. So you want to preserve that when you're doing this sanding. So it's a case of just feeling for where that shape is. And I'm just concentrating on the raised part of the wing, not the wing tip. I don't want to lower that anymore. So those panel lines have nearly gone here at the end. So I'm going to go in and refresh those again. We'll probably have to do this two or three times as we bring in this wing down. 
and having uh, rescribed them, reinstated them, can carry on now and do the next stage of the sanding. I think this will be a bit quicker than the other side. The other side step was worse. I can feel that this is a bit less uh, pronounced. So about 10 minutes work has sorted out these wing tips, more or less, just a tiny bit more to go down. And I just want to reinstate the panels. I've lost them nearly going right down to the tip. So I'll get those back. See, there's also a big gap that we're going to need to fill as well, but I just want to get it all level first. So I think just another very slight sand in here, just on the front edge. I can still feel a little bit of a lip there. This is one uh, example where I'd always use uh, just a sheet of sandpaper held in the hand rather than on a hard stick because there's so many compound curves on the underside of this wing that uh, a flat stick would probably destroy those curves and it's much easier to feel where you're going with some loose sandpaper here where you want to preserve the delicate shape of the underside of the wing. Okay, that's got it. And that's nice and level now. So having got that how I want it, I just use a bit of micro mesh. This is 4000 grade micro mesh, just to get rid of any burrs. And just polish the surface up a little bit. Okay, so that's nice and level now. And I've kept all the panel lines that I want to. One question I've still got to answer really is about this line here along the front edge outboard. Uh, it's formed by the wrap over moulding of the Airfix top wing. But I'm not sure whether it's meant to be a panel line as well. It's a peculiar shape. Uh, for uh, just for a molding and I've got a photograph of the underside of this aircraft where it's suggesting that there is a panel line along there and maybe Airfix just used the opportunity of a panel line to mold the kit in this way but I'm not sure but if anybody's got any definitive information about that a reliable uh, drawing which shows the panel lines accurately then let me know. I'm going to leave it as a panel line for the moment until any further information comes to light. Uh, in which case I'll have to fill it in if it turns out that it's just a moulding method rather than a panel line. I've got one underside drawing in the Osprey Vulcan book but which doesn't show it as a panel line but I don't trust that drawing it's got the position of the fuel tank sumps in the wrong place uh, or missing altogether. So I'm not certain that it's absolutely reliable. So if anybody watching has got uh, in better information about that line, uh, then just pop something into comments. I'll see it. I do check them every day. So uh, I'll see the comment and uh, we'll take it from there. To treat this gap at the wing tip. I'm just going to paint in some Mr. Surfacer 500. It might need more than one coat to sort this out. It's quite deep and wide. I'll just leave that to dry. I'll take it off with some leveling thinners.
the starboard side's fine it's uh, just like the rest of the panel line so I'm happy with that just going across the join I don't want to go into the join and pull it all out some of it's come away but the second coat should sort that out okay so that's the second coat I'm going to just put that to one side whilst we uh, sort out another couple of bits and pieces the first thing I'm going to look at is the exhausts for the engines and I've trial fitted uh, this one on the starboard side these are the exhaust nozzles or at least the housing just in front of the exhaust nozzles the exhaust nozzles themselves are a separate part so this part fits in here like this and it's just a rear extension of the jet pipe uh, housing here the problem with it is it's not a great fit it's not level and one of the problems I had was to make sure that the join here was nice and tight on one side it was coming apart on me uh, so what I've done again is my usual little trick of putting a piece of styrene in to support the join line and flooding that with some uh, extra thin glue the quick setting type and that's just held it all together and I needed to get that nice and tight to get a better fit on this jet pipe I've already fitted the fan blades on the back here and I'll paint that along with these parts here which are visible as metal and I'll use some stainless steel like I did for the engine faces they're not that visible but I will paint the insides in that colour this is uh, long before the days of ceramics and things like that on uh, engine exhausts uh, they were just uh, steel of some sort don't know exactly what they were but they were steel and a silver colour so that's what uh, I'll be doing uh, on this model and what I'm going to have to do I think with it once I've painted it is just adjust the height just to minimise uh, the amount of sanding that I have to do so it involves lifting it up a little bit it might need shimming on the inside face here but there's enough of a glue surface at the front edge uh, to get a good bond but I might just reinforce it and put some uh, shim material in there just to get it nice and level I think the important uh, join is here on the inside I want to get that level because I'm not going to really be able to get in there to do a lot of sanding so these are all worth a test fit and we also had a step here which I've reduced on the starboard side I need to do the same on the port so that's nice and flat now so I'll cut the parts out for the port side exhaust nozzles and again just be careful not to get these mixed up because I suspect that they will only fit on one side there's lots of ejector pins on these but they're all in places where you're not going to be able to see them which is a good thing but it's still worth giving them a good clean up even though the ejector pins and sprue gates aren't visible they might just interfere with the fit so I'll give them a good clean up I'll fit those uh, blades I can just paint the hole inside in the stainless steel so I'll just go over and give these a coat of 
uh, stainless steel along with the upper faces of the exhaust here on the top wing panel uh, and then we can glue those into place and get them cleaned up okay waiting for that mr surfacer to dry on the exhausts before i paint them so in the meantime i'll prepare the tail cone i'm doing all this now so that we can get a complete airframe so uh, i'm wary of all of these parts really so i want to check fit them at every opportunity otherwise the kit will catch you out so uh, this tail cone can be uh, glued and set to one side to dry whilst we get on with the rest of the build uh, some versions might have a little uh, housing at the bottom here but mine doesn't so i'm not going to drill those holes out and getting this together i just want to make sure that the panel lines are nicely lined up so uh, that's okay that's gone together without any trouble this little scoop which was uh, a cooling duct an air duct uh, just to cool down the radio radar equipment inside this tail cone and it looked better actually with the front drilling out a little bit just to uh, hollow the front scoop the rear is open already i think we'll have a go and get that scoop opened at the front Okay, so that's the uh, finished tail cone. I've got the uh, ducts fitted to the side. This cooling duct, you can see the result of uh, drilling the end out there. I think that just gives a little improvement to the part. Uh, so this has all been uh, cleaned up and the panel lines rescribed on the underside. So that's uh, ready to fit. We'll do that now now here i've got to confess to another goof uh, caused by not reading the instructions and that is that i should have fitted the tail cone before fitting the fin because it makes uh, the whole assembly a bit tight it does go in but uh, it's just one of those things that i should have read the instructions it's a couple of times where i've slipped up on this kit so uh, we'll just have to squeeze that in i'm not going to be too concerned about the fit of this just yet because it's going to need quite a bit of work i think there's another step here at the back that's probably as close as I'm going to get it. So I'll just apply some extra thin quick setting into that joint. The kit has quite a good amount of location tab for this, so it should cement up pretty well. Make sure there's plenty in there. So that's uh, nice and equal either side. The join's going to take quite a bit of work, but uh, it's not too bad. We'll get that sorted out. And the panel lines on the underside match up as well. So that's all good. The next thing to do is to fit the exhausts that we've painted up in some uh, stainless steel this is uh, mr hobby 
super fine stainless steel and it gives a really nice effect so we'll get these fitted they might need a little bit of touch up afterwards but I'm not expecting too much work once these go in we'll get the right ones for the right side just pop a couple of pegs on those just to uh, wait until they get set up okay so while I'm waiting for the tail cone and jet pipes to uh, set I'll build the control surfaces now so I'll put these together I'm not going to worry about the uh, sprue gates on these I'll clean them up afterwards just get them glued up first and then we'll do the clean up when they've dried Putting blue tack on the part to hold it uh, is pretty uh, useful really. It just gives you something to hold on to away from the glue surfaces. Having said that, I've just got a spot of glue on there. But generally the blue tack just helps you to hold on to the parts while you get them glued up. And we also have the outboard elements here. So we've got eight control surfaces on this aeroplane. So these control surfaces are obviously very different to a conventional aeroplane. Uh, and that's because obviously with a delta wing arrangement you don't have a tailplane with a horizontal stabilizer and traditional elevators on it uh, so what the Vulcan or at least the B2 at any rate had was these uh, control surfaces which were known as elevons and that just means that they could perform and move in the uh, same way as either an elevator uh, or an aileron so they were a lot more flexible than those two control surfaces and the other benefit of the delta wing which was a very high lift uh, design was that you didn't need uh, conventional flaps as you would on a normal aeroplane so at low speed uh, which is when you would need the flaps obviously uh, these control surfaces, particularly the inboard ones, these large ones here, uh, combined with the air brakes, uh, were used to control the aeroplane at uh, low speed for takeoff and landing. So, uh, the really interesting uh, differences between the Vulcan and any Delta Wing, really, and a conventional aeroplane. And what I didn't realise until building this model and doing a bit of research was that it was initially designed by Roy Chadwick who was of course responsible for the Lancaster at Avro uh, but unfortunately Roy Chadwick died in an air accident uh, before he'd got chance to see the Vulcan in flight uh, which is a great shame it was uh, a revolutionary design I suppose uh, particularly for an operational bomber so that's the control surfaces we'll have a look and see how they fit up now
So they're actually a nice fit into the trailing edge of the wing. Just a check fit of these, they appear to go in pretty well. So that's the port control surfaces fitted. There's some actuator housings to go on the outboard ones, but we'll do those together when we can turn the aeroplane over. Just made sure that the uh, edge of the wing here is clean of any glue, otherwise it will interfere with the fit of these parts. So I can just attach them with some extra thin glue. Tell me a quick setting again. Uh, you uh, want these in the neutral position. can be adjusted once we've got all four on, get them somewhere near at this stage. Gently turn that over and let's get these actuators fitted or the actuator covers. I'll do these one at a time just to make sure that I don't get them mixed up. It's getting to be quite a large model to be moving around the bench. With that one I just took the tab off because it was uh, slightly out of alignment. Okay that's the control surfaces in, I'll let them set up properly. Interesting, they do have quite a flare up uh, when in the neutral position. But they're not going to need that much cleaning up. I'm reasonably happy with those. The next thing I want to do is to fit the nose. So I'm just taking a look at the fit again of that. And again, it's going to need some work, but it's not too bad. <laughs> Just getting rid of the paint from the inside, the black paint from the cockpit. Because uh, with the weight of the nose on this aeroplane, remember we put 40 grams in here, it's uh, going to put quite a bit of stress on this joint. So I want to get it nice and glued up. So I'll go around with some contactor. I'm not going to worry too much if the glue squeezes out here. It'll help with the filling. I 
Oh, the important thing, obviously, is to get a strong bond. So need to get some tape on that. It's going to take a while to set, I think. With all this tape holding this nose on at the minute, I don't want to use any extra thin. Because that will wick under the tape, probably and spoil the uh, plastic. But as an alternative to the extra thin, and to start the filling process, I will put some sprue goo into here. And that's because sprue goo is structural. It will actually cement the parts together as well and fill the gaps. So this will look a mess probably to start with. But what I'm after here is strength. It's not looks at the minute. Try and get that down into the joint. And when we get the tape off, I'll uh, fill in where I've not been able to do that. Okay, that looks quite a mess, doesn't it? But uh, it'll be fine. The important thing is that that's a strong bond. Uh, I'm not going to have a chance to fit the splitters in this part because I will want to do some clean up here and the splitters do extend forward a little bit so it just obstructs me getting that sanding done. So that's most of the airframe at least together if not filled and finished. Got the tail cone on, we've got the uh, flying surfaces fitted, the exhaust nozzles fitted as well and of course we've just seen the uh, nose go on as well. Okay so that's a completed airframe glued together if not filled and finished. Uh, I don't want to do any more with this uh, for the moment until this nose is completely set up uh, and I'll leave it taped up for at least a couple of days to make sure that that sprue goo has gone off and the underlying cement has gone off as well. This is a heavy nose and it needs to be well set before we do any more work with it. Uh, but the Control surfaces look nice. The work on the underside of the wing has come out okay as well. That sanding that we had to do earlier on in the video. The tail cone is going to need quite a bit more work to blend that in. Uh, and the fin as well. And we've also got the jet pipe tunnels here at the back to blend in as well. So quite a bit of seam work to do. So I'll put that to one side, let it dry thoroughly uh, for at least another couple of days. In those couple of days I've got plenty to do uh, on the hood for the next episode of the hood series. Uh, and then I'll come back to the Vulcan towards the weekend where I'll do the filling work, fit the splitters uh, and get the model in some primer ready for painting. So uh, that'll be coming up in part 7 at the weekend. In the meantime, I'll be posting Hood Part 48 uh, as planned on Friday, and I hope to see you for that one. So that's it for this one, everybody. Uh, I'll see you next time for the next part of the Vulcan. Uh, in the meantime, look after yourself, stay safe, uh, and I'll see you in another few days. Bye for now. Thank you.